I'm Conrad, and this is your Mary Pickford D Place movie review. It began as a holiday. Eager to escape a bright future on the Great Plains, Arthur Howitzer Jr. transformed a series of travelogue columns into the French Dispatch. The name of the film is The French Dispatch. It is written and directed by Wes Anderson. And we all know if it's a Wes Anderson film, there's going to be some unique storylines and there's going to be a lot of actors doing some unique character work. And that is definitely the case here. Joining me now is our November guest community film reviewer, Sydney Smith. Hello, Sid, how are you today? I'm very fine and yourself, Conrad. I'm doing really great and I'm really glad that you were able to join us this week or this month. Before we get to the review of the film, let's let our viewers know a little bit about you. So where in the desert do you live? I live in Rancho Mirage. And how long have you been there? Three years. The French Dispatch uh, starts off in a very unique way in that it starts with the end of the film first. So because of that, let's do something different on this review. Let's start off right away with a review, with a rating of the film. One palm tree is not good. Two palm trees is good. Three palm trees is great. I'm going to give the French Dispatch one palm tree. Yeah. All right, Sid, how do you rate it? Right from the beginning. Two palm trees. Are you, were you, are you a fan of Wes Anderson films? Well, I am a fan in a way, but he's a very inventive and original director, very good with visual elements and good with actors. To me, he's a, a, always a director worth paying attention to. Yes, I, and I, I will agree with you. He is definitely a director to pay attention to. He's had, I think this is his 10th film, but in this one, I really felt that it was too much of... Wes Anderson trying to be Wes Anderson. I realize this is all about a tribute to the New Yorker. So it's sort of like, you know, he had me at the word go. This is a fictional magazine in a fictional 12th century French city. The name of the city is, I'm going to really murder this one, but I'm going to give it a try anyway. In you sous blase. It, and in, it translates in English to boredom upon apathy. And hence the reason I was bored and I fell asleep. <laughs> okay, okay, let's move on to the next thing. So the next one has to do with the actors. I think, first of all, you have to mention Bill Murray. By making him the editor, he's basically standing in for a famous, famous editor, the man who co-founded The New Yorker, Harold Ross. I mean, Bill Murray's greatest affect is dryness. And as much as I love a character who just keeps on giving me what they give me, I just, I, I, after a while, I want more from Bill Murray. I want something different. And, and I'll, I'll give you another character that I found very interesting. And it's proof that there is no, there are no small roles. It is a gentleman by the name of Alex Lothar, I think the name is. And he plays Morissette, I believe the guy, the character's name. And he is the assistant in the magazine office who really just has a few scenes. But I'm going to pick a rather obscure one too. There's an elderly character, a woman, in the first story. That's a fascinating actress named Lois Smith. Back in the 50s, she was in a film called East of Eden. And she and James Dean are in one memorable scene. So this is a woman at a young age shared the camera with James Dean. You can count on one hand, people. Yes. Another person I'd like to talk about is the narrator, Angelica Houston. Uh, she just, her voice is so recognizable yes. and it's so welcoming. And you can really just sit back and, and float into whatever she talks about. So the three, the three stories that, that are in this film are The Concrete Jungle. The next one is a revision of the manifesto, which is an interesting storyline, which I believe is actually true. And then the next one is the private dining room of the police commissioner. Did all of those work for you? Did one of those work for you? Did none of them work for you? 
I thought the first one and the last one worked much better, but they all had weaknesses. And yeah. the one that I did not like at all was the private dining room of the police, police commissioner. In a car chase that happens, and then it switches to an animation car chase. Yeah. And they run and they run and they run and they run and they go up and they're up and they're down and they're running around yeah. and they run and run and they finally come back to the same spot that they were just at. And I'm thinking, I'm yeah. already bored. Why did you make me watch an animation and yes. then make me end up in the same place? I it just, it, that I was like, I'm done. I hope this film was over soon. Uh, Sid, you and I have talked about it a lot. We have agree on some of, it, of this film. We don't on others. Now that we've had our discussions, let's rate it again and see if we stay in the same place or we change. But I'm sticking with my two, mostly because I think for the sake of The New Yorker, what he says about the sadness of the death of publishing and just as a bold filmmaker, it's a movie, if you're interested in movies, you ought to go see. And I will completely disagree with you. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I'm gonna stay with my one as a not good. In, in my book, less would have been more here. All right, Sid, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. All right, talk to you again, bye-bye. Bye-bye.